This is David. Welcome back behind the velvet robe. Let's just get right into it today because we are joined by a very, very controversial figure in the Bravo world, Miss Sarah Farasia. Wait, who's now more hated, do you think? Myself, Tom Sandoval? I don't know. I never thought I'd be on that list, but I think uh, I think I've officially made it. Um, you are a very controversial figure. Um, I thought you were going to say who's more hated, me or you, and I was like, I still would say me, but you are catching up. No, we're we're almost getting to be neck and neck. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, no, I mean, um, Mr. Yontif evokes. Although I will say, when I was at something about her, this is this is why I will forever, I will ride for you forever. I was standing in line and I started talking to the guys behind me who only stayed like 20 minutes. They had to get back to work. One guy was a dog walker. And uh, I don't know, we get talking about what we do. And I said, I have a podcast. And he goes, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you the woman that I hear on Behind the Velvet Rope podcast? And I said, yes, that's me. And he goes, oh my God, I love David. I've been obsessed. I discovered David during the pandemic. He got me through. So shout out to Tim. And, who was lovely in line and his friends and they adore you. And I'm like, David, I'll forever be grateful for you. You have, you have built my audience as well. And I've learned so freaking much from you behind the scenes in business so much. So people hate you because they're jealous of what you've accomplished and you've done it on your own. And baby, you came out of left field, sweetie. You came out, you came out of nowhere. That's what they're mad about. This and they're mad out. that I'm not on a network, which keep your networks to yourself, people. I ain't interested. This man, y'all, he sold an HR company and he was like, I'm going to launch a number one pop culture podcast. <laughs> what? Honey, honey, daddy needs a break. Well, listen, I saw you. Po- I got to repost that thing you posted about Tim. Shout out to Tim. Thank you for saying I love how you're the lady on behind the velvet rope. I love that. I need to repost Tim. Um. Talk to me about what happened last week. We had an opening of something about her. Now, I am in the Hamptons. You did ask me if I wanted to come with you. I'd like to go on record to say that even if I was still in L.A., um, no, I would not have gone with you for many reasons. But uh, talk to me about what happened. You went to the opening of something about her. I got a lot to say, but l- let's hear what you oh, got to say. Oh, Okay, well, um, you, and you know, feel free. You can trash me too, because because the internet has. I'm I'm okay with it. Been in this business a long time, thick skin, but I stand by what happened. So I went. I told you always I wanted to go. First of all, I love a sandwich. I love a sandwich. Sandwiches are having a moment here in L.A. Says you. I said last week I don't know anyone in L.A. who eats a sandwich, and apparently lots of people agree with me. I truly don't know anyone in L.A. that eats a sandwich. No, n- nobody. And that's not even trying to be funny. Go on. I do. And there's apparently this Dutch bread trend where, I don't know, it's like soft and crispy. Anyhow, I always wanted to go to this opening. And so the day of, I had to work early, you know, in the morning we had to podcast and they said on, I actually could not find anywhere where their opening hours were until recently. They didn't update their Instagram. They didn't update their TikTok. I'm talking to something about her one. Okay. But I read on just Jared that morning, 10 to four. So I got there at exactly 11, 1120. And I thought I'm going to document my experience. When I got there, long line. Okay. So, but what I didn't, what people didn't see is there was a long line on the street, but what actually was happening is there was an alleyway between like a little coffee shop and something about her. So they were lining people up on the street, plus that way down the alleyway coming around and then into something about her. So the morning started out great, like fun, so many awesome people, Tim, met other people, a woman that was like, I've been following you on TikTok, um, new podcast listeners. Amazing. The crowd was like unbelievable. They're fans. Okay. Shout out to all of them. It was awesome. So 1120 comes 1220. We're seeing some people come out with sandwich bags. And, you know, I stopped a woman. I was like, what did you think? She was like, I loved it. It was so good. Like their fans, like loved them raving about the food, everything. And for the first two hours, I would say the line moved. And then come, I'm going to say like 120, we just stopped and we stayed in the alleyway for another two hours. And at this time now, early in the morning before the sun came up, they handed out water. And after I did my videos, people came on, they said they still handed out water. You like, you didn't see that. Okay. So they continued to hand out water. 
But for me, it went south after nearly four hours and nobody from the restaurant staff. Now, I don't expect Ariana and Katie, although I do have some critiques about that, but I didn't expect Ariana and Katie to come out and give updates. But they had a staff of probably five, six people working for them. No one came around to the line, the the end of the line, the 150 of us waiting for three, you know, two hours, three hours, four hours to update us because basically what happened at 2 p.m., they went to no more takeout. They went to dine-in only. Now, sweetie, they have five tables in there, okay? So they were actually seating people, letting them order. Once they left, it's like you would be like getting a number, right? Only there were no numbers. We, there was no numbers. There was no like reservation sheet, nothing. And they didn't give us any updates. So I finally went for the group because people were, I mean, the guy behind me was like, I need water. I mean, there was a a, a beautiful mom. And I know people are like, why are you a mom there? It's because these people mean so much to people. That's why. It's like, so she's a mother. She shouldn't be able to go. She had a little boy asleep on her shoulder, waiting hours, standing on her feet. Now, yes, she could have left at any time, but we all could have left at any time. But the my gripe was, and where I went absolutely bananas, is nobody came out to say at two o'clock, look, all around the line. Hey, we, we've moved to dine-in only. We are so grateful for you being here. We're going to close shop at four. So at this point, you're probably not going to get in. Please hang out if you want. Ariana and Katie are going to come out at 345 and do photos if you want. Um, we, we thank you so much. Like join our email list, come back. Nothing. Like you couldn't get these women to, they wouldn't, they wouldn't walk three meters out of the restaurant to say anything. And that's, sorry, I... I, you've been in the business a long time. I've worked in radio. I've worked in television. People have come for me like, you've never worked in restaurants. I've worked in restaurants. I worked for my stepfather who had a bowling center connected to a ground round for two years. We always try to make things right. Yes, you're going to have customers that, of course, like there's nothing you can do, but they are very rare. Most people are very understanding. They're very forgiving. Their pizza's undercooked. Would you mind, you know, cooking it? Of course, like whatever we can do, we're so sorry. Usually the moodiest person in a restaurant is the chef. So, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I've never been to a giant grand opening and I've worked many grand openings. People were there going, well, why didn't they have James Kennedy in the alleyway DJing? Or why didn't they have a merch booth in the alleyway? They could have been making more merch money. What? Where's like a free sample? Where's like a taste of like bread? Where's a cookie? I, I'm i sorry. Maybe you have. Please come for me because the internet has. Maybe you've been to grand openings where they give away nothing. They don't communicate to you through the – maybe that's standard now. And certainly in California, I will say – there nobody hears about customer service. They do not give you customer service, whether it's IVF, car detailing, restaurant, un usually until you lose it. And then they're like, okay, okay. It's that surfer mentality. Like, yo, brah, chill out. Like I'll get you, you know? So that's usually what happens in LA. I'm getting accustomed to that. In DC, none of this would fly. Been to so many openings of five-star people in DC. Gordon Ramsay's burger place. So many spots. Oh, sorry, not him. Bobby um, Flay. Flay. <clears throat> like whatever we can do, they're working the line. It's a long line. They're trying to keep the momentum up. None of that. So at about three o'clock, I'm like, I say to the people in line, I mean, there was a woman there from Australia. She gave up her entire tourist day. And again, yeah, you, that's not the, like the point that people are never going to get from me. And it's, I don't care, is it's not, we all voluntarily were there, but we all would not have stayed four hours if they had come out and communicated what was going on. So to me, I 